Gamma ray bursts are the brightest type of electromagnetic blast known to humankind. They can originate from the collapse of massive stars, the collision between two neutron stars, black holes, and even pulsars. They release a type of radiation known as gamma rays, hence their name. They're also deadly, as a gamma ray burst is thought to have been the main cause of one of Earth's five extinction events. But what would happen if a gamma ray burst hit the Earth today? Would it set the world on fire? Let's find out. But before we jump in, be sure to do the thing and like, comment, sign up for the mailing list, and subscribe. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Minds Horizon, and this is Science Gap. Gamma ray is a penetrating type of electromagnetic radiation that results from radioactive decay of atomic nuclei. It's also what created the Hulk. Gamma rays have the smallest wavelengths and produce the most energy of any other type of wave that we've observed in the electromagnetic spectrum. But thankfully, they're only really produced in mass quantities from cosmic scale objects and events like neutron star collisions, pulsars, supernovae, and relativistic jets from black holes. The Ordovician mass extinction, for a while now, is thought to have been caused by a gamma ray burst, or even two bursts, that hit the planet 440 million years ago. The extinction event wiped out an estimated two-thirds of all species on our planet. Originally, an ice age was blamed for this sudden loss of life, and while scientists have generally agreed that this was a major contributing factor, ozone depletion and many other interrelated effects have also been proposed as potential factors that contributed to this mass extinction event. If a gamma ray burst were to occur within 10,000 light years of Earth, it would pose a significant risk to life. During the Ordovician extinction event, it's thought that such a burst caused the ozone layer to be depleted by about 40%, and it would have taken about 10 years to recover. This depletion would have allowed ultraviolet radiation to bombard the Earth's surface. You know, that thing that causes sunburns and skin cancer? Because ultraviolet flux is largely reduced in water, marine organisms that lived closest to the ocean's surface would have received most of that UV radiation and would have represented the bulk of oceanic die-offs. The depletion of the ozone layer would have also initiated a sudden onset of global cooling, leading to the ice age that we mentioned earlier. Gamma rays break up nitrogen and oxygen molecules in our atmosphere, converting them to nitrogen dioxide. Nitrogen dioxide, which is heavily present in that disgusting layer of smog you end up plunging into when you fly into Los Angeles, blocks sunlight from reaching the Earth. The fossil record holds some evidence for the die-off of species before the Ice Age even officially began. Though there is no smoking gun like the Chicxulub crater for the Ordovician mass extinction, we're going to run with the idea that a gamma ray burst was responsible. If a gamma ray burst were to happen within 10,000 light years, whether or not it would damage life here would depend on a few important factors. First off, whether Earth would be in danger would largely depend on what type of object or event is releasing the deadly gamma rays. Supernovae cover a massive amount of space, emitting ultraviolet light, gamma rays, and an absolutely ludicrous amount of neutrinos, which don't really interact with matter at all. But surprisingly, if one were to happen within 10,000 light years, we probably wouldn't be very worried about it at all. As a result, no matter what type of event or object is causing this, it would take around 10,000 years for the light and radiation to reach Earth. A gamma ray burst released from the collision of two neutron stars, a black hole, or a pulsar would depend on Earth's position, however. Earth would have to be within their sights, so to speak, as most of these events release gamma rays and other harmful forms of radiation at their poles. Obviously, location matters a lot. Where Earth is in relation to the event or object is crucial. A supernova exploding 10,000 light years away is going to have a reduced effect compared to one happening 30 light years away. Betelgeuse, for example, is 642.5 light years away from Earth. It's a red supergiant that is quickly shedding material and gas, and scientists think it's going to go supernova in the next 100,000 years. When it does go supernova, it's going to light up the sky like a beacon. It would be so powerful that it would cause shadows to be cast at night. In fact, 
According to a simulation conducted in 2020, it's thought that you would be able to see this point of light during the day. Surprisingly though, scientists don't think that Betelgeuse exploding would be very dangerous to Earth. The most significant way it could impact life here is that animals that use the moon to navigate would probably be confused for a while because there would essentially be no quote unquote dark time. That's just how bright the supernova would be. In fact, it's thought that a supernova would have to be at least 50 light years from Earth before it would be considered a threat to us. So does this mean that supernovae don't create enough gamma radiation to be a real threat? Well, no. Both gamma ray bursts and supernovae are thought to release 10 to the 44th power joules. And while this is just my speculation, thank you, computer. I think that the threat level from relativistic jets and gamma ray bursts from pulsars comes from how they're concentrated. I could be wrong about this, but perhaps the reason why supernovae aren't thought to be as damaging from longer distances is because supernova explosions are spherical for the most part, and gamma ray bursts are focused beams of energy. Again, this is just a guess. As for pulsars and relativistic jets, both of those events would require the Earth being in the direct path of the particle beam of the gamma ray burst before it would be considered a threat. And if Earth was in the direct line of fire of one of these things, what would it look like, and what would happen to us? If a gamma ray burst were to hit our planet in modern times, it would more than likely result in a large part of the atmosphere being destroyed. Just like the Ordovician extinction event, the ozone layer would be depleted, leading to far more UV rays piercing through the Earth's atmosphere. Exposure to gamma radiation would cause mutations in DNA for animals and plants. And no, none of us would be turning into the Hulk, sadly. As mentioned earlier, gamma ray bombardment would lead to the breakup of nitrogen and oxygen, creating a brown gas called nitrogen dioxide. Just imagine the brown, dirty sky of LA as if it's covering the entire Earth, and that's probably what it would look like. That brown gas would block a lot of the sun's light from reaching us here on the ground, which would cause global temperatures to drop over time. And yes, this would eventually plunge the world into another ice age. But the Ordovician extinction event is unusual when compared to extinction events like the one that killed the dinosaurs, in that it would take a long time for the full effects of the gamma ray burst on the atmosphere and the Earth as a whole to become fully apparent. Though, curiously, it wasn't quite as dramatic as the KPG extinction event, but it was twice as severe, resulting in the extinction of 85% of all Ordovician species, with marine invertebrates like brachiopods, trilobites, bivalves, and corals being hit the hardest. A modern version of this event would likely look similar, with the average global temperature falling by 5 degrees Celsius. A modern ice age would be devastating to humanity. And as we've established in other episodes of the show, the Earth is already in the middle of a mass die-off of species that some scientists are referring to as the sixth mass extinction. The question is, would an ice age make this even worse? It's hard to really say, but one thing is for sure, humanity would be hard pressed to adapt to these changes, and more than likely, these changes would either cause society to collapse or it would drastically change it. Evidence for the late Ordovician glaciation event can be seen as far as Morocco, South Africa, Libya, and Wyoming. In my book, Mind's Horizon, which takes place in the middle of a snowball Earth scenario, during the early days of the modern ice age, surviving humans flooded to the equator overcrowding cities, resulting in various wars and atrocities as humanity desperately tried to survive. But Snowball Earth is a particularly severe event, which would see the whole Earth covered in ice sheets, even the oceans. Most ice ages, even the late Ordovician glaciation event, aren't like this and result in ice sheets spreading out from the North and South Poles, but they are thought to stop near the equator. Either way, a gamma ray burst would be bad news for humans. If you dug this content, be sure to drop me a like and leave me a comment. And hey, if you dig climactic space disasters, check this video out. It covers what would happen if asteroid Bennu hit the Earth, and it does way more damage than you might think. Be sure to smash that subscribe button, ring that bell, and check out the Patreon as well. Speaking of which, look at all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time. That disgusting layer of smog you end up plunging into when you fly into Los Angeles.